We have a coronal hole that is rotated into the Earth's strike zone, and it's sending us some more fast wind. But luckily for emergency responders to Hurricane Florence, the effects thus far are pretty mild. That story and more in the news this week. Space weather this week has really calmed down, although it doesn't really look like it on the sun. We have a massive coronal hole that has rotated into the Earth's strike zone, but the shape of this coronal hole has meant that the fast wind that it's sending us is slowly ramped up over the last couple days, which really limits its impact. On top of that, the magnetic field from this fast wind also isn't all that conducive for solar storming, so impacts thus far have been pretty mild, and they will continue to be this way. This is great news for amateur radio operators, shortwave uh, operators, as well as emergency responders to Hurricane Florence, who are having to deal with the hundreds of thousands who are still without power, and all of the search and rescue that is being done via helicopter and reconnaissance by GPS drone. All of this is still ongoing. This is all wonderful news because you probably won't have any more impacts easily over the next two weeks. Switching to your m threat meter, you can see we are extremely low when it comes to the X-ray flux and therefore by proxy the solar flux. This is what uh, solar minimum looks like, folks. It's We've pretty much bottomed out. We're well below the B floor when it comes to X-ray flux. Solar flux is easily it's in the upper 60s, which means that's poor radio propagation on Earth's day side. The only thing that's helping us a little bit is the fact that we have this fast wind. It's kind of helping propagation just a little bit. So you might enjoy a little bit of propagation on the bands, but probably propagation is going to be a little bit better for you at night than even during the daytime. And unfortunately, Unfortunately, with the spotless sun that we have, these conditions may continue for the next two weeks. Switching to our solar storm conditions, you can see the last time we actually reached storm levels was back on the 14th, and this was the tail end of that big solar storm we had back on September 11th when we reached G2 storm levels. So since then we've been kind of calming down and calming down. We actually jumped down to quiet conditions for a short while and now we've bumped back up to unsettled conditions and this is due to that fast wind from that coronal hole that's in the earth strike zone right now. But again, this is not going to be anything but just mild conditions. I'd be surprised if we bumped up to active conditions. We might, but I doubt it. And then things will continue to settle down after this, and we should have pretty much unsettled to quiet conditions for the next two weeks. And the massive solar storm that we had back on September 11th that lingered all the way to September 14th gave us some gorgeous aurora all over the world. Now, I don't have the capability of showing you all of the photos that were sent in to me, so I'm going to be showing some today and then some next time. We'll start with some gorgeous views that we saw in Sweden and in Norway. Aurora was seen in Scotland, and as we move over the Atlantic, you could see it in Iceland, and it was seen all over Canada in the Western Hemisphere. Here's New Brunswick and Ontario. It was seen in Manitoba and in Saskatchewan, and as we drop down to the United States, it was seen in Alaska, of course. It was also seen in Maine and down to New York. It was seen in Michigan and clear down to Iowa. It was seen in Wisconsin and in Washington State. And as we flip south to the Aurora Australis, there were so many shots in New Zealand, I didn't know which ones to show first. So I'll show some next week as well. But it was all over New Zealand, it seemed. So here are a few shots from there. And it was also seen in Tasmania. So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun from behind. And what you can see when you look at the sun's backside, well, 
pretty much nothing. We got a finger-like coronal hole that's rotated into Earth view. It's going to be sending us a little bit of fast wind here in the next week or so, but it's probably not going to get us above maybe unsettled conditions. So Aurora photographers, outside of that, you have the next two weeks off pretty much. So you're going to have to go over and pour over your old photos from the last two weeks of some brilliant solar storming. Now, as far as amateur radio operators and shortwave uh, radio operators go, especially those who are re responding to Hurricane Florence, well, we have a couple remnant bright spots on the sun's backside, but they're not going to be enough to boost the solar flux for you. So radio propagation is still going to stay in the poor range for, for the conditions, and that's going to continue for the next couple weeks. The nice thing, however, is that we also don't have any more coronal holes. We don't have any more fast wind, and so likely the storm conditions are going to be non-existent. So that will give you some decent chances of getting communications in and out of the hurricane torn areas where I know hundreds of thousands are still without power and emergency rescues are still being made daily. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are in the middle of the fast wind coming from that massive coronal hole that's rotated into the Earth strike zone. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting unsettled conditions with about a 40% chance of a major storm. But these, uh, this chance is probably for sporadic conditions. This is not sustained. At mid-latitudes, we're also expecting unsettled conditions with only about a 30% chance of active conditions. And then things should continue to calm down throughout the week. And by the time we hit the weekend, things should be pretty quiet. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything is in the green when it comes to solar flares. We have a spotless sun right now, so there's no risk for radio blackouts. But what this does mean is that we are back into the 60s for solar flux. Now, this is good news for GPS users, especially at low latitudes. You guys should be enjoying some decent uh, GPS reception right now. But this is bad news for amateur and shortwave radio operators as well well as to the emergency responders of Hurricane Florence. We're dealing with low radio propagation conditions right now, and this is going to continue on Earth's day side easily for the next couple of weeks. Now, because this is also solar minimum, we're dealing with a higher penetration of cosmic rays than we normally would get. So you frequent flyers, and this includes the air crew who fly more than 800 hours annually and fly at high latitudes and high altitudes. You guys are at marginal uh, range for radio radiation dose right now. So please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week is really calming down. We do have a massive coronal hole that's in the Earth strike zone right now, and it's sending us some fast wind. But the shape of this hole, along with the magnetic polarity of the wind that's coming out, really just isn't conducive for some big solar storming. So we're sitting at unsettled conditions right now, which is most likely where we're going to stay. And then we'll continue to calm down as the week progresses. And then that's pretty much it. So Aurora photographers, easily over the next two weeks, you're probably going to be needing to take a little bit of a break. Now, amateur radio and shortwave uh, radio operators, as well as the first responders to Hurricane Florence, well, uh, radio propagation isn't looking too good on Earth's day side right now. We are in the poor range for solar flux, which means radio propagation on Earth's day side will continue to be poor. And that's the story for the next two weeks. So most likely CW and the, some of the new digital modes may be the way to go. But because we are having kind of these unsettled conditions, you know, if propagation on the day side doesn't work for you, try Earth's night side. You might be surprised. You might get a little bit of a boost there. So just try that out. Now, as far as GPS users are concerned, well, you guys are looking pretty good. Even on the dawn dusk, dusk terminators and at low latitudes, your reception should be pretty nice easily over the next two weeks. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.